We will start with a QA session now. 1131 Valchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. Uh, sir, we are expecting some guidelines from you so that these projects can be of PG level for, for MTech and ME. Yeah, these uh, projects that you have seen, they are preliminary uh, investigative, you know, the, the stage uh, which is called a literature uh, stage. So when you are actually looking for a topic, uh, you have to ac explore in and out, you know, what, see, you have to be strong in the fundamentals first. After that, you would like to do some projects. So you have to see, uh, uh, there must be a motivation also behind the project. Motivation is not just doing a project, but the motivation behind that particular topic why this topic is so important and now you start looking at in the whole world what people have done okay and then you you choose a project and then you say you know you you come down to a point where a particular uh, idea or a particular problem you know you have to identify a problem also in that after that uh, after that you have to uh, tackle using your uh, fundamentals why this pro can i solve this problem in a different way there are multiple ways of solving a problem and then then you say then you say that uh, i want to solve this problem now that uh, stage will take you long time it is not easy and it is not uh, you know just uh, it is not uh, uh, solving a insertion sort problem or or that uh, shell sort problem you know you may have to find the property of that problem and then go ahead and you know so it's it's a research so at the mtech level or me level you know you have to do so many things it's not just about a project you know you don't you don't just cho choose a project at the first stage you choose a domain you know where the impact is more and then and then explore and explore and see what people have done in the whole world and then you say okay i would like to solve this one looks very interesting okay now how many people have solved uh, this problem and in what angle they have tried to tackle this problem so then you know you will narrow down to one one path after that you know explore uh, more exploration will happen sometimes frustration will happen you know you have to cope up with all these things and then uh, you you will say that yes now this problem this problem what i'm trying to solve is actually going to solve some real issue also it may be a th in theory it may be in practice but you know uh, so you will finally see that you you should be contributing to to the knowledge body so all these problem I mean, all these uh, research topics which are they are quite less they are more on docuwiki you will find a lot of stuff um, that docuwiki is also not complete but you can check there are many many uh, areas where people are working and um, uh, you know so you need a guide also one double two nine, Sardar Patel Institute of Technology, Maharashtra. Oh, what is the difference between linear and relative layout? Means, uh, which one is performance based? Oh, you mean hierarchical and uh, linear structure? No, uh, linear and relative. Means considering the performance, uh, which layout we should use in XML. Okay, if you are asking this question, I, I believe linear is just linear and uh, the relative is something in relation to some, I mean, you are, uh, it is relative to some something else, you know, some point. Now, if you are looking for performance, I, I don't see any difference because they, they are small codes and uh, I think I should run as equally as, um, I mean, is that your, uh, what I am trying to answer, is that fulfills your... But most of the applications are uh, using relative. No, most of the applications are using relative, probably because it is easy to code. In linear, we, we are using horizontal and linear, uh, vertical. Right. So, uh, using the this uh, relative layout, right. this, uh, this can improve the performance in screen. How, how it can improve? And yeah, that, that's my question. Means how does it, is it improving or not? Uh, no, no, how, who told you it's going to increase? Or you are asking me whether it's going to increase? Yeah, I'm just asking. So I, I, I think um, maybe if we can look at it, why if it is increasing, then probably if the performance in, is increasing, maybe due to some, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, computation that happens in the linear methods or, you know, those, uh, the methods uh, related to the relative type. So, 
that that could be the only indication why if the performance there's a performance that the, of course there will be performance difference you know if you're talking about raster and vester graphics if you're done graphics scores you'll come to know why which one is faster and which one is slower so it depends on your application your application you want to be faster probably you'll use one so according to you uh, which should i use <laughs> relative or linear I, I would i would say you should perform an experiment on this and then then you will get results whether which is going to be faster but the experiment if you are going to perform don't perform on a very small scale use a huge data to perform experiment then you will realize and then you can capture the log inside and analyze it if you have done an experiment and a design course that will tell you know how how you do an experiment and then and then um, uh, in fact uh, if you can document it well like you know procedure apparatus you know observations and then uh, what is the calculations like your physics and biology and mathemat uh, what is it science uh, journals you know p normally people don't do that okay yeah yeah thank you i'll be happy to receive 1243 national institute of science and technology berampur orissa my question is how we can uh, what is the use of ipc mechanism and uh, how we can use it effectively in application android application ipc is a inter process communication mechanism so when you whenever you two two process want to communicate they need to use ipc so for android uh, we are using the binder only uh, if you are uh, looking a uh, ipc mechanism in linux then there are many mechanism are there like linux is using signal socket semaphore so all these are used but on android only will use the R uh, binder mechanism so effectively means uh, this uh, this is the effective way the binder compared to the old ip old mechanism which are in uh, the linux only so 1121 svp engineering college visakhapatnam sir what is the advantage of representing the data in tree map sir it's actually uh, depend on the data as well if you want to see the data whole data in one go like for example uh, you don't want to see the labels or detail of a data so just uh, size of the data and uh, different colors uh, these so these are of importance so you just uh, show the whole data on tree map but if you want to navigate the tree or you want to search any particular node then tree map is not a, a good choice use a space tree or uh, any node link is better and uh, tree map because uh, here you don't need to scroll because if you have seen the whole data is within that rectangular box so it's not uh, very readable so if you uh, require data that is more uh, readable or you want to uh, show labels then tree map is not the best option if you google or search on a tree map then you'll see uh, more the graphical uh, like charts and graph type of data would be better render on tree maps so if you just search on it you will exactly see the difference how we will know whether it is a trusted application or bogus application madam that depends on your thinking suppose uh, some game application is there uh and game application is asking access to the uh, to your phone book so you can think that why game application is asking the access to your phone book so you can say it is not trusted and you can change the permission of phone book to bogus or empty so it's not like predefined that this application is trusted or this application is not trusted it depends what the permission that application is asking and whether that application need that permission or not so depending on that you can decide whether the application is trusted or not does that give you your answer then wha then what is the advantage of using uh, tissa or mock write sir ha ah, so that's what i'm saying uh, tissa is a uh, tissa is a idea is an idea whether uh, suppose some application is there uh, which is asking this type of permission which you think it is not good why that application is asking permission to access my phone book or anything suppose you are using some game and that game application is saying i need access to your phone book then you can also think why it need the access to your phone book so by using tissa model you can install the game you can play the game but you won't give the access to that permission so this is the advantage of tissa and everything 
Sir, what is the advantages of maintaining uh, the log history? That is uh, Android you told us, sir. Yeah, yeah, Android yeah. we maintain a RAM, uh, log history in RAM. Uh, other than we can take it from secondary memory now, sir. Yeah, yes, we will never maintain any log history in the RAM. But we will keep the applications which are interesting to the user. Okay? We will keep the log history in SD card itself, but our appl uh, the application we are going to create, it will use the log history from the SD card only. We are not keeping any log history inside the RAM, but instead of log history, we are keeping the applications which are frequently used by the user. Okay? Yes, sir. Uh, we can. Okay, sir. Uh, but in Android, you told uh, yeah. all the applications are uh, stored in uh, RAM, other than to save the time, other than uh, yeah. taking from the secondary memory, sir. Yes, sir. But if there is an application which is uh, greater than the RAM size, what to have to kill the all the process, no, sir? Uh, okay, good question. You ask. You are asking that uh, if the application is greater than the RAM size, whether we will allow that application into the RAM or not. Okay, that is the question. Yeah, yeah. Right now, maybe I think there are no such kind of applications. But if you have such, we can use the uh, Linux uses the swapping mechanism, so it's may, it may not be problem. And virtual memory concept also there, so we can use swapping technique and we can resolve that. It simply works based upon the Linux kernel. Okay. Is Android supports the virtual memory, sir? Yeah, yeah. I, whether it is a external or internally, sir. Uh, virtual memory, how it may be, external or internal? It's a virtual, no? Uh, I have one question regarding data visualization issues on tablets. So can we use that data visualization as a database management? Data visualization is just to show uh, the data differently. It's not a, a database management system or anything. And issues, issues means there are... Uh, click events. Uh, so in touch screen tablets, we don't have click events. We'll touch and touch move. So these things uh, affect the interactivity and uh, somehow animation. And uh, since in tablet, RAM size is very less. So because of uh, uh, if, if the data is too much, then to render it, uh, it takes a lot of time. And uh, it also affects the animation. So these kind of um, uh, issues are there. And uh, again, the size uh, of the screen is very small. So uh, the font size, the color that we use to show the data, these all things we need to consider. Because in the desktop environment, it's far more different. So you cannot just port uh, the same uh, layout or same uh, technique on the tablets. You need to do some um, changes here and there, and that is in. Um, I mean, it's in consideration. We are working on that. It's not yet uh, a, a layout or a um, predefined. Uh, is, you can say uh, things. You need to find out what are the optimal way to uh, actually use it on the tablet efficiently. One zero nine eight Marathwada Institute, Aurangabad. Sir, my question is related to the emulator. Why launching failures shows some time? Any some um, application launching stops, camera stop? Why this happen? So uh, if you're getting some error while uh, launching emulator, that's what we assume the question is. So the first is check your uh, AVD manager. Uh, you go to the Windows uh, Android AVD manager. Check all configuration of your emulator first, and then uh, try to run it. Or just if it's again giving error then please just uh, uh, stop that device, delete that device, create a new one, or restart your Eclipse once. It should work. I mean, there is no such uh, default problems with emulator until and unless it's not installed properly. So make sure it's in, it has been installed uh, on Eclipse properly by going to the AVD manager. I hope that answers your question, sir. 